In this video, we're going to be looking at making a big batch of potassium persulfate, K2S2O8. I originally did a video on this, and I was just testing on how to make it, so the quantity was rather small. It did work, but since then, I've done a lot more research on potassium persulfate, and I'm going to go over that in this video. I'm going to go over some information. Some of this might be a repeat. Potassium persulfate is also known as potassium peroxidisulfate. It is a very powerful oxidizer. I cannot understate that enough. It's used often in the polymerizations of chemicals and a polymerization is the process of combining small molecules called monomers to form longer chain polymers. And we've all heard of polymers before if you're interested in chemistry. And some of these polymers that's used to make are polystyrene, which is a styrofoam. Some rubbers are done this way, vinyl, dyes, and latexes, and it's even used to polymerize some medications. Its melting point is 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit, same as the boiling point of water. It has nothing to do with that. They just happen to be identical. At this point also is when the eight oxygens in the uh, potassium persulfate are released. Potassium persulfate is very sparingly soluble in cold water, and that will come in very handy in this experiment. The powerful oxidizer, it is also used to bleach hair when you're coloring hair, and to make the strongest flash powder known in chemistry when it's mixed with magnesium. And so the end result of making a big batch of this is for this, to mix it with magnesium and make a powerful flash powder. As I go over the materials section of this, I'm going to also talk about what I did the first time. So we need ammonium persulfate, NH42S2O8, and we can see the S2O8 right there matches right up here, of course. So that is typically used to copper uh, to etch copper. We're going to use 100 grams. That is the same thing I used the first time I did this. Second thing is potassium bisulfate, KHSO4. And I've saved a lot of this for making nitric acid. So I don't know. I probably have 500 grams of this easily. And uh, first time I used 50 grams. But stoichiometrically, we need 120 grams. So this is going to go up by 70 grams uh, in order to match the ammonium persulfite 100 grams I used the first time. And water will go from 250 milliliters, double it to 500 milliliters. The reaction is as follows. Uh, the nh 42 s 208 which is the ammonium persulfate, is going to be combined with two of the potassium bisulfates, KHSO4, and that will yield two NH4HSO4, which is ammonium bisulfate, plus K2S2O8, right here, potassium persulfate. This is a double replacement reaction because you're just doing that. You're replacing the K here with the NH4, and over here, you've moved your NH4 to the SO4. So, Double replacement, just like it sounds. Going over some of the other changes, um, I determined what the theoretical yields would be. And for my original experiment, the uh, ratios and amounts that I used, which I went over here, they're crossed out. Um, the theoretical yield should have been 49.63 grams. But using the stoichiometric amounts and ratios, the theoretical re yield, excuse me, jumps to 118.4 grams. So a significant jump in the methods, in the 500 milliliters of water, we're going to warm it to 50 degrees Celsius and dissolve 100 grams of the ammonia persulfate. Then after that, we're going to heat it to 85 degrees Celsius because the uh, potassium bisulfate does not want to uh, dissolve easily in water. So we're heating it up. Again, this is the amount and ratio or the temperatures that I determined the first time I did this when I was messing around with it, and it did work. So heating it to 85 degrees Celsius, the next step, then slowly dissolve 120 grams of the potassium bisulfate until it's completely dissolved. This will eventually happen. Sometimes it takes some time, but it does happen. Next, we're going to chill the solution times two to three hours. At that point, the uh, double replacement reaction does occur, and potassium persulfate will start to come out of solution, and usually it falls to the bottom of the beaker. So that's what I'm expecting this time. The remaining ammonium bisulfate, which has now been formed, will remain in the liquid part, and that will not precipitate out. We want to then filter it. We want to save the crystals, which are the potassium persulfate, Wash it with cold water. As I noted earlier, it's not soluble at all, really, in cold water. And then dry the crystals. And although it's not written right down here, make flash powder from this. So let's go make another big batch of this stuff, which I've actually never done. Uh, because, quite honestly, finding the information on this originally, even a video on it was not present. At least I have one video out there. And now this one will be out there, too, on how to make this awesome oxidizer. And mixing it with magnesium to make an awesome flash powder. This is where I got my ammonium persulfate. You can see right on there, it's a copper etchant. And uh, this was, I think, 2.2 pounds. It's on there somewhere. There it is, 2.2 pounds. And I paid about, I think, 12 bucks. It's not that much at all, so that's good. 
100 grams of ammonium persulfate pre-weighed. This is the potassium bisulfate I'm going to be using. It came from making nitric acid around two years ago, and uh, I saved it, of course, and that's the reason you should save your chemicals, even if it's a leftover product. 120 grams of potassium bisulfate. To start, I'm heating up 500 milliliters of water to around 50 degrees Celsius. The water temperature is at 48 degrees Celsius, so I'm going to start adding the ammonium persulfate here. Done. I'll be back when this is uh, all dissolved and the solution is clear. All of the ammonium persulfate has dissolved and I'm now heating it up to around 85 degrees Celsius and at that point I'll be adding the uh, potassium bisulfate. The temperature of the solution is just above 86 degrees Celsius so I am going to start to add the potassium bisulfate here and I'm going to be doing this slowly so I will be back when I'm done with this because it's going to take a little bit of time. So as this goes here, we're producing the uh, potassium persulfate in, in the double replacement reaction, ammonium bisulfate. Just adding the last of the potassium bisulfate here. All right, the potassium bisulfate has all dissolved. Uh, what looks like a little cloudy solution here is just because there's a lot of bubbles that are flying around in there. So I'm going to turn this down and uh, we're going to chill this next once I get the heat off here. There we go. I'm going to let it sit for maybe 15-20 minutes on its own and then uh, put it in our chill box. Every time I make uh, potassium persulfate with this method here, uh, at the end when you're just cooling this down but it's still hot, a lot of these bubbles are produced. Um, a lot of them and it goes on until this goes down to about room temperature then the bubbles disappear and I think what might be happening I don't know this for sure is that the ammonium uh, bisulfate is releasing hydrogen um, turning it into just ammonium sulfate uh, that's pure speculation I don't know that for sure but uh, it's just an interesting observation uh, because it goes on for so long uh, and so many bubbles are produced putting the potassium persulfate solution into the fridge or freezer doesn't matter it's just got to get cold for at least a couple hours it's been exactly two hours so here we have our potassium persulfate crystals and uh, boy they settled out nicely there I don't know if this is gonna focus right or not but there's some really nice crystals on the bottom there that have just grown up so next step here is to filter just a quick look at the macro crystal structure of the potassium persulfate before we filter it. We just saw the potassium persulfate come out of solution and gather on the bottom of that beaker. So I wanted to go over the solubility and precipitation in this experiment and just explain a few things. It's pretty basic, but I think it's worth going over. Before we do that, I'm going to define a salt. A salt is a neutral compound made of a positive charged cation and a negative charge anion. So we can see in both of these words, there's a word ion, ion. So we're dealing with ions and the most simplest salt that we can think of is salt, Na plus, Cl minus, and it's held together by an electrostatic charge. So all salts will come apart because they're made of two ions, a positive and a negative, in the correct solvent. So for salt, it's water, as it is actually, as water is the most ubiquitous solvent that exists, uh, but will come together in the right conditions. And these conditions can be one of two things, typically. It's either a temperature or it's by dehydrating the solvent. In this experiment, we have ammonia persulfate and we have potassium bisulfate. And as we saw, you're combining one ammonia persulfate with two potassium bisulfates. So here's the positives written as positive, negative is written as negative, two K pluses because to offset the negatives here, we need two potassiums and there are two HSO4 negatives, which is to offset the two positives right here. And I wrote a symbol for each one. So here's the positive ammonia part. Here is the excuse me, negative persulfate part. Here is the positive potassium part. And here is the negative bisulfate part. In solution, all of these come apart. 
and the positives have the dents. You can see in the negatives have the protrusions here and here. And when you mix this together in a solution, the strongest electrostatic charge is between the potassium, the two potassiums here, and the persulfate right here. And so they combine. We got this, which is potassium persulfate, with both the positive and negative, canceling out, giving us a neutral compound. We're also producing the ammonia bisulfate. So this will come together with this over here, and we'll end up with two ammonia bisulfates, again, as one compound, neutral, positive, and negative, canceling each other out. It works because the potassium persulfate has the strongest electrostatic charge between these potassiums and the persulfate right here. So if we come over here in this experiment, we're dealing with temperature because we're going to reduce the temperature in order to form a precipitate of potassium persulfate. The temperature that we came up to was 85 degrees Celsius here, and it precipitously dropped all the way down. It didn't get quite to zero, but it dropped pretty much in a straight line there. And as that dropped, the formation of the precipitate went up, crossed right here, and then continued this way. So at the point that the precipitate really starts to come out of solution, if we come up here and across, it turns out to be around 50 degrees Celsius. And this is not right exactly the ratio here, but it is around 50 degrees Celsius that the potassium persulfate will come out of solution. And we see these two combining again and again, and even more as time goes on. And we get more and more of the potassium persulfate falling to the bottom of the beaker. The ammonia bisulfate is also in solution, still, fro still floating around as two anions the ammonia and the bisulfate, and they will continue to float around, and they're still here floating around because they will never come together, as I mentioned. And the reason the ammonia and the bisulfate will never come together is because to get that particular uh, chemical out of solution, you need to dehydrate, evaporate the water, and then you will get your ammonia bisulfate crystals left at the bottom of the beaker. They will not come out of solution because of temperature changes. So that's how we can do this experiment and get only the potassium persulfate to crystallize out of solution and then uh, filter it. And then we, if you want, get the ammonia bisulfate out by taking that solution that was left and dehydrating it to get the crystals. So it's just an interesting thing that happens when you do these experiments and I just wanted to review it. So hope this helped a little bit. To show you what I mean here, I took the ammonium bisulfate solution and put it in the freezer that was set to three degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, what you end up is just one big ice blob. So the ions are in there. They're just frozen with the water uh, and will not be able to move, of course, and come together, and they won't. Now, if I dehydrate this water, do the reverse and heat this thing up, eventually the ammonium bisulfate crystals will be found dried at the bottom there. Okay, just wanted to show you that. Before I filter this, it makes sense to decant the liquid on top. Okay, there are the crystals. We're going to start filtering our potassium persulfate here. I do have a piece of filter paper in there. It's not necessary, but I just want to wet it first before I turn the pump on. All right, I'll be back in a sec when I'm done. Okay, I'm literally putting the last bit in here. And I will be back when it's done pulling all the liquid through it can. It's done, and I'm going to turn this off and get my uh, cold distilled water. We're doing this, of course, to remove any uh, loose reagents, so to speak, that may still be in here. done dripping through all of the uh, cold distilled water and I've got to say it's always nice when uh, the chemistry works meaning that I poured a lot of water on this to clean it and none of it disappeared again because potassium persulfate is so insoluble in cold water right, let's move this over here wow that it that got seriously packed down holy smokes I did not expect this, so once again, and I will be back, so I'll be back when this is done here. Just finishing this up here.
done. All we have to do now is dry it. This is my light bulb heater that I've used in many, many times since I built it. It is a really, really great way to dry things out at low temperatures. And because this potassium persulfate will start to melt and break down at 100 degrees C, uh, this is what I'm going to be using to dry it. So I'm going to turn the light on here. And there we go. Took about an hour, but it is now completely dry. And we have quite a bit of this very excellent oxidizer here. So, of course, this isn't the end. I am going to take this, mix it with some magnesium, and make the strongest flash powder known. Before I can make flash powder, this needs to be ground up. So I'm just showing you every step of, of what I'm doing here. So I'm going to grind this to a fine powder. What I have on the left there is some aluminum foil in a cup shape with uh, one gram of magnesium already added. And I'm just going to do a 50-50 mix here. I'll be perfectly honest, I'm not sure this is the best ratio, but uh, that's what I'll do. I got 0 0.4, 0 0.84. There it goes. One gram. I'm going to put the fuse in here once I mix it together like so, and then we'll light it. I mixed the two as well as I could, put a fuse in there. Let's go like this. Let's light this flash powder that is the strongest known in chemistry. Oh my gosh. I can't see. Okay, now I can. Wow. I have some potassium persulfate crystals on the slide right there. So let's take a look.